All right, welcome. I just want to make a quick little video because what I've been doing in this video series is showing you how to do everything when it's in y equals mx plus b form. So all of my examples are gonna be in y equals mx plus b form, but I know that books are different, and I know that teachers are different, especially even tasks and everything like that, that sometimes they're gonna still expect you to do something in slope-intercept form, but they're not gonna give it to you in slope-intercept form. They might give it to you as a unsimplified uh, equation, or they might give it to you in standard form. Now we're gonna learn how to solve and do the, all the same operations when there are in different forms, However, if you understand something in slope-intercept form or you're asked to specifically do something in slope-intercept form, it is important for us to be able to understand how to change an equation so that it looks in slope-intercept form. So you can see what I did is I just want to go through three quick examples where you can see that each one of these equations are not in slope-intercept form. Now, before we get into examples of what to do when it's not in slope-intercept form, let's pretend that I need the, each of these equations to be in slope-intercept form. So let's look at the characteristics of slope-intercept form and see how can I transform each of these three equations so it will be in slope-intercept form. Well, the main important thing with slope-intercept form is you see that I'm solving for y. That means my y variable is isolated. So what I need to do is I'm going to circle my y variable for each one of these equations. And what that is going to tell me to do is I need to isolate that variable. I need to get it by itself. That means I need to undo all the operations, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, that's happening to that variable so it can be by itself. Now, in this first example, we can see that the right side of the equation isn't even simplified. We don't have any parentheses in here. So the first thing I can do is I can just simplify this by applying distributive property. So I have y minus 4 equals 3x plus 6. Now I see that my y variable is being subtracted by 4. So to undo that, I'm going to add 4 to both sides. And we can only add 4 to the 6, not the 3x. Negative 4 plus 4 goes to 0. And then we can add this to 10. So y equals 3x plus 10. Now what I have done is I have transformed my equation into slope-intercept form. All right. In this example, we have a negative x on the side plus a 4y. Well, remember, I need to get the y all by itself. So I need to get rid of this negative x. So to undo a negative x, I need to add the x to both sides. Now, I can just add the x. Since there's only 0 over there, I can just add that x in there. So therefore, I'll have 4y equals x. Now I need to undo multiplication by 4. So I'm going to divide by 4. So I have y equals x over 4, which we could also write as y equals 1 fourth x. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is now in slope-intercept form, where you could say, well, where's the b? Well, the b is still going to be our 0. All right. And last but not least, now again, I have my x and y on the same side. And again, I just need to isolate my y. Now remember, we always undo addition and subtraction first. So therefore, I'm going to subtract the 2x on both sides. Now this is going to add up to 0. So I'll be left with 4y equals, I cannot subtract a 2x from 12. So I'm going to rewrite this as negative 2x plus 12, since that 12 is positive. Now I need to undo multiplication by 4. So I'll divide 4 on both sides. Now that y equals this 4 divides into both of them as that divides to 1. So therefore, I have a negative 2 fourths x plus 12 over 4. So that 4 divides into both terms. Well, this can now be simplified equals to a negative 1 half x. And this can be simplified to positive 3. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you convert an equation when it's not in slope-intercept form to slope-intercept form. Thanks.